As a business owner, do you feel like you are just wearing too many hats and you're doing too many things and you feel like you're busy all day, but then at the end of the day, you're not really sure what you got done? That is a pretty common feeling for many entrepreneurs. I know I've been there myself. And really what helped me get through it was one, hiring out to a team. So having people on my team that I could delegate my workload to. And then also having certain systems in place for the type of business habits that I built out for myself. So implementing some habits and daily routines and things that just kept me on track so that I knew what I was going to do and where I should focus my energy, what was important. And on today's show, we are going to be talking about that. My guest today is Sensi Charlery. She's going to be joining us in just a moment. And I'm really looking forward to this discussion and having her here because I know she has so many great tips. We've worked together a few times in the past. And even though we're going to be talking about business systems and strategies, she's really good at increasing traffic and making affiliate conversions on her site. And she has this trick that she does with her Amazon links. And it's so smart. It's so simple. When you hear it, you're going to be like, oh, why am I not doing that? And I know you're just going to open your blog in another tab and you're going to start doing what she recommends because it just makes so much sense and it's something that we could all be doing to increase our Amazon affiliate or any affiliate conversions. So we're going to be talking about a few things on today's episode. Let's just dive right in and get started. You're listening to the Her Paper Root Podcast, a show all about money and entrepreneurship with host Chelsea Clark. Chelsea is a marketing strategist and the founder of HerPaperRoot.com, a friendly and supportive hive for ambitious, passionate entrepreneurs like you to learn how to growth hack your idea into a profitable business. We encourage you to fearlessly tackle your wildest goals. We know that as your own boss, you can deliver your unique message and make more paper. You just need a plan. Here's your host, Chelsea Clark. My guest today is Sensi Charlery. She is a finance professional by day and entrepreneur by night. She is on a mission to help other young women take control of their lives and become the best version of themselves. Through genuine discussions on her podcast, Secluded Thoughts, she has also sold two of her blogs at my marketplace, blogsforsale.co. Sensi is here to share her tips for implementing systems and habits and business strategies that have helped her double her income and her free time. Welcome to the show, Sensi. Hi, Chelsea. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us all about your startup story. So my startup story was actually a bit of an accident or not really an accident. I was just pursuing one of my hobbies and then I realized that I can turn it into a business. So basically what happened was when I was a sophomore in college, I decided that I wanted to go on this whole personal growth journey and I felt inspired to share it with other people, um, basically young women my age. And so I created a blog and I started posting about personal growth, Um, different books you can read and stuff like that. And I realized that I was the only one reading my blog, you know, when I would look at it, because I figured out how to use Google Analytics. And I realized that I was the only one looking at it. So I did some research on how I can get more views, get more readers. And then I came across Pinterest. And on Pinterest, while I was doing research, I learned that you could turn a blog into a business, and that there were people making six and seven figures with their blogs. So I thought, hmm, I could do that. And I started it in college. I bought the domain and everything just before my senior year in college. Like I said, in the beginning, I was posting very random stuff. And then 2019, that was my first official year in business. That's when I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn this thing into a business. I like doing it. I want to help people. I want to grow it and make money you know, just blog about my personal growth journey. And then I wanted to help other people. And then I realized I could turn it into a business. So I started pursuing that. Oh, that is so cool. I love that you just started because you were feeling inspired. You said you wanted to help people. And then you realized, hey, by having more of an impact, I can actually make more money too. So that is wonderful. When you decided to monetize it, how did you monetize? Initially, because I was still in college, 
um, I was responsible for, you know, paying for my tuition every semester. So at first I didn't want to invest in my blog. And that was a hurdle that I had to get over because I learned about a lot of different people who were selling courses that were helping people make money. But because I was still in college and I had to pay my tuition, I was afraid to spend money on something that I wasn't a hundred percent sure was going to work, but then I got a scholarship and then I, I decided that, okay, I'm going to take the money that I earned from my job because I was also working part-time. I used the money from my job to buy about a handful of courses. And then um, at first, you know, with blogging, when you start implementing different strategies, it doesn't always take off immediately. And then I also kind of hesitated to invest at first. So I remember in the first six months of that business year, I made a whopping $4. I made $4. Um, and that was my spring, that was my last semester in college, I made $4. But then I was also on the back end, I was implementing all of these strategies from the courses that I learned. And then in the following six months, I made $10,000. Oh, nice. Yep. So what do you think made that change from $4 to $10 to $10,000? What happened in between that? So for one, I realized that I really had to work on my mindset. And one of the things you always see in courses is mindset modules. Like there's always something in the beginning on mindset. And I initially always zoomed over that because I thought, okay, just give me the strategies and let me make some money. So I, some of the courses I bought, I really didn't look at those mindset modules. I just zoomed over it, but it was after a couple of months when, or weeks, I should say, when I really wasn't seeing results, I started to work on myself and I focused on treating my blog as a business versus a hobby. So the very first thing I had to do was work on myself. I had to do some personal development. I had to change my perspective and treat it as a business. And then as a result, I, um, I realized that I had to create systems in my business because a lot of people started talking about systems. So what I did, I started off pretty easy. I basically created a simple Google Doc and then I wrote all of the major activities that I had to do for my business. And I titled it like activities required to run my business. And with blogging, it was things like creating content, graphic design, um, marketing, which was basically Pinterest and email marketing. And I detailed out all of the steps that were needed for each of these tasks. And then I highlighted what was draining me what I could outsource. And then I started um, looking for ways to outsource. And then I discovered Fiverr. And then I started paying contractors. And at first it was trial and error, but I landed some solid people that I worked with for the duration of my blog before I sold it. And I found someone to write my posts. I found someone to create my graphics and even help with keyword research. So I created those systems and then I also, one of the most important things that went along with that, I also started batching my work and scheduling time on different days to do different things. So one day would be for um, reviewing content that I got from my copywriter and then um, editing it and putting it into WordPress to schedule. And then another day might be, um, you know, the same thing for my graphics and then for Pinterest scheduling and stuff like that. So after I changed my perspective and I created those systems, I was able to free up a lot more of my time and then I could better implement the strategies that I learned in these courses. And it was mainly um, how to monetize with affiliate marketing and ads, and then also how to get more traffic to your website, how to grow your Pinterest. And um, basically once I started creating those systems and I created like a whole process and I started treating it like a business, I freed up a lot more of my time. And then all of those revenue goals that I had that I wasn't hitting in the beginning because I was just focusing on money, all of those revenue goals eventually just started taking care of themselves. Wow. I now had a process. What was one specific strategy that really worked for you? On affiliate marketing, specifically on how to improve your conversions with 
Amazon affiliates was if you basically do something like list the top three suggestions in a post, like let's say, for example, I had a college blog. So if I made a post about dorm room items for freshmen, basically because the average person's attention span is you know, not that great, sometimes people don't stay on blog posts very long. So if you list like the top three or the top two recommended dorm room products for college students at the top of your post before you get into the list, you can get a lot of conversions right there at the top of the page because before even scrolling to the through a list, if you have like 30 things, once people land on that page, when they see like the top three things, they're like, oh, that's great. I'm already seeing, like I can basically get the gist of the post and see what the top three recommendations are. And then they click on those links and then you get a commission if they purchase. Okay, that is a great tip. Post your links at the top of your blog post. So it's the first thing that people see when they land on that page that will most likely be where you will get the most clicks. So that is a great affiliate marketing tip. Thank you for sharing that. Yep, my Amazon conversions doubled from one month to another when I implemented that because more people were clicking on the links. Yeah, that's so true. When we were selling your site, buyers kept asking me, how is this possible? How is she getting such high Amazon conversions? Like, let's yeah. see the screenshots. <laughs> and we showed them the screenshots and sure enough, it's all there. So yeah. I can attest that that does work because I have seen your success with that. So well done. Yep. I went through all of the popular posts that I had that were um, affiliate posts and I did that for every single one of them highly recommend if you can like summarize the top three recommendations or just give a brief synopsis with like the top three and here's the thing too here's another great thing you don't necessarily have to try to guess what would be the top three items for whatever it is you're posting about i basically looked on amazon i looked through my analytics and i looked at what people were clicking on the absolute most so I looked at I looked at what links because some of the posts were already out for a while. So I looked at what specific links, what products were getting the most clicks, and I bumped that up all the way to the front. So that's another great tip. So you don't necessarily have to guess. If you already have posts that are published, you can just see what people are clicking on and then move that to the top. I know that people listening right now, they're going to be opening up their website <laughs> and they're looking at that right now as they are listening. So yes, be aware of what people are clicking on. Take a look at your analytics and go into your Amazon dashboard, see what is selling, what's being clicked and how you can build on that. Running a profitable blog takes a few great tools. I know it can be hard when you are trying to develop and monetize when you don't know which tools actually can help you get ahead and which ones are just pricey, shiny object distractions. To make it really easy for you, I have compiled a list of all of the tools, software, apps, templates, and training that I use to run and scale my blog and business. From the best email service providers to legal page templates to beautiful styled stock photography, reliable web hosting, and even cart systems for selling digital products. It's all there. Find all of the tools of the trade that I swear by by going to herpaperoot.com slash tools. Sensi, you have actually sold two of your websites at blogsforsale.co. Can you walk us through what that process was like when you were putting your site up for sale? Oh my gosh, Chelsea, that was like, that was like one of the best things I did in my blogging business, to be honest, because I eventually felt kind of burned out because my blog was a college blog and it made sense when I was in college. So, but after I graduated, I didn't want to keep writing about college content. So my initial plan, honestly, my initial plan was to just set it and forget it because it was earning passive income and I knew which seasons I would get the most money. I intentionally just wanted to set it and forget it. And then one day I was on Pinterest and I saw this post about how I sold my blog and I was like, you could sell a blog? Like I had no idea you could do that. So I read the post and she talked about how she sold it through your website. So I emailed her and I was like, 
can you walk me through the process? Like, what was it like? And she was like, yeah, Chelsea is great. Highly recommend you sell through her. She makes everything so easy. I was like, okay. So I went to your website and I love how you have a link on there to get a free valuation because that I, that was like the first thing I clicked. I was like, oh, that's nice. I could submit this right away and just wait for you to reply. And then we can have a conversation. So I filled it out. And then that's when we started talking about, you know, prices and everything. And I remember I had like so many questions in the beginning and you were very patient with me and you answered all of these questions. And basically it was like, all I had to do was just have you listed. And then I literally just moved on with my life. Like you took care of everything in the background. And that honestly exceeded my expectations because I thought about selling it. Um, after I did that, I thought I tried to do some research. I was like, okay, if one person's selling it, then there's probably other ways to sell it. Let me just do my research before I jump in. And then there, there's like websites where you could sell it on your own, but then they talk about like contracts and stuff like that. And I had no idea like how I could trust somebody to hand over everything before I get paid and stuff like that. But you literally took care of everything. Like you had the contracts ready, you talked to all of the potential buyers and basically it was very easy because um, because I have a nine to five and I still work. So I literally just had you listed and then we would talk when there were offers, we would negotiate. And the first one sold pretty quickly. The smaller one, yeah, that one sold pretty quickly. And then I, caught, I got a glimpse of what the process was like and um, all of that. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is pretty simple. And so I felt more confident. And then the second one sold and that process was even easier. And I was so surprised. I was like, all I had to do was, you know, talk to you at first and then you listed it and then you came back with offers. And then when I accepted the offer, it's like you literally detailed all of the steps. I was so nervous in the beginning. I was like, oh my God, this blog I had, I, like, I have files since like 2018, like, how do I transfer all of this? I had no idea how to transfer a domain and the WordPress and all of that. And as soon as I accepted the offer and we signed the contract, you literally sent a detailed email with like everything to do. And I was like, wow. I was like, wow. I was like, this is amazing. And then once we went through that, it was like a smooth transition. It was like the easiest thing I've ever done, honestly. Well, that really makes me happy to hear. Thank you. And I just want you to know it was pretty easy to sell both of your websites because they were just really high quality sites. You did beautiful work. It's great content. And as soon as we listed your sites, we had so much interest from buyers on both of them. So you are an awesome content creator. And if you are ever working on another blog in the future, please do come and let me know because yes, you make great work <laughs> and I will find you a buyer in no time. I actually am. I, I started one and I was like, yep, so I'm going to start this and then I'm going to sell it with Chelsea cool. because I already started with the end goal in mind. So it's a, a niche site that I'm working on because um, I, you know, that's why I refer to myself as a creative entrepreneur. I just like, I just love creating content online. So I thought about, you know, let me, let me just try a niche site and then I'm going to sell this with Chelsea. What type of niche is it going to be? It's going to be a Halloween blog because on my College site, if you remember, the Halloween post that I made was number one on Google. I do, yes. So I learned how to optimize for Halloween and I'm already planning out the content and everything because I know exactly when the seasons pick up and I know exactly how to market it. So I was like, huh, let me just work on this project and then I'll sell it with Chelsea at the end of the year. That's so true. You have your seasonal content down to an art with your costumes and the Halloween niche. <laughs> Are there any tips that you could share with listeners who may have a seasonal blog like that? They're trying to get the word out or get it to rank on Google. What is your strategy for doing that with seasonal content? So the most important thing is to post way in advance. Like Halloween is in October and I'm planning to have everything posted by the end of this month and it's April. And the reason for that is number one, if you plan on using Pinterest, which I would highly recommend, it's like the number one way I got all of my traffic on my other blogs. Um, 
If you use Pinterest, typically it takes a couple weeks for the pins to get traction and really like rank. And I um, learned a lot about how to get traffic from Pinterest. So you have to create those optimized pins on Pinterest to link back to your blog. And it's going to take a couple of weeks for those pins to gain traction. So you want to post in advance. I would say probably about two, three months in advance of the season just to give yourself that extra time so it can start picking up. And then by the time it's in season, if you do everything right, if you use those keywords and if you don't know what those keywords are, basically if you type in Halloween, for example, the search terms that populate beneath that, these are keywords. You want to make sure you use that in your pin descriptions and also in your blog posts. So when you schedule those pins and you optimize them, by the time the season come around, your pins will be ranking if you do it correctly and you can gain a lot of traffic instead of posting like in um, September and then trying to like rush everything and think it's going to work out and then you're just going to get like thousands of views in October. So the number one thing is to start way in advance so that it can sit. And then also I know with Google, um, with Google, it takes some time for them to crawl your website. And then also if it's new, if you don't have a lot of backlinks on Google, you probably won't have like a high domain authority. So Google takes longer than Pinterest, but even the main idea I want to carry across is that the search engines will take time to rank your content. So you want to post way in advance. Yes, that is a very good tip. Are there any other systems or tips that you wanted to share that we hadn't touched on already? Another thing I want to touch on is focus on creating value instead of making money. In my first six months of business, I was very money oriented. I was very focused on making money. I had these revenue goals that I wanted to earn and I didn't really focus on providing value. And if you think about it, the people you follow on social media or the bloggers you subscribe to or even podcasters, the reason you are hooked on their content is because it provides value to you. It's useful to you. And as a result of providing that value, your platform, whatever you use, is going to grow organically. And as it grows, you will make more money. So the main thing you need to do is focus on creating value versus money. And honestly, that when I started doing that, that's when you know everything started falling into place. People were emailing me, like I had students emailing me and I was building like, you know, I, I, I had a whole community in my email list of students who were asking me for tips on improving their GPA and stuff like that. And then I could write more content catered to what people were asking me. And then as a result, those posts did very well. And then I got more money from AdSense and affiliate. So focus on value, not money. Yes, I love it. Focus on providing value and helping people. And then you really will in turn make more money because you're putting out great content. And that is honestly just the best advice. <laughs> If you are like struggling with imposter syndrome or anything, know that you're not alone and just trust the process because I'm only 24. So that's something I was struggling with a lot. And I started in college. And if I can do it as a college student, then you can do it too. Thank you so much, Sensi. This has been so much fun. Where can everyone find and follow you online? So I would love if everyone could subscribe to my new podcast. It's called Secluded Thoughts. And like you said, um, I'm really focusing on having genuine conversations there about becoming the best version of yourself. And I will also probably add in some tips for entrepreneurs like myself, because I've learned a lot along the way. And ultimately, I want to focus on providing that value for people. So I would really love if everyone could subscribe to my podcast. It's Secluded Thoughts. And you can also follow me on Instagram at secluded.thoughts. That's wonderful. And we will put the links in the show notes here on the podcast as well as on the Her Paper Root blog so everyone can connect with you. Thank you again so much. I love this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. To learn how to start your own blog today, you're going to want to enroll in my free blog starting course. 
This course walks you through every step you need to set up and monetize your brand new blog so that you can start earning income right away. You can get free access to my blogging course by going to herpaperoot.com slash start. It's S-T-A-R-T. And if you are looking to buy or sell an online business, come and check out the listings that I have at blogsforsale.co. Thank you for listening today. I look forward to catching you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the Her Paper Root podcast. We hope you found this episode helpful. If you did, please say so by leaving us a review and be sure to share this episode with your friends. For more entrepreneurship resources and to connect with Chelsea, swing by herpaperroot.com. Now go make something.